There's some similarities in it for both of them there. And a warm welcome back to our Saturday afternoon stroke evening coverage of the UK Pro League here at the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre at Loughborough University. We've had four matches, we've got two still to come. Here's a quick reminder of what we've seen so far. Emily Appleton and Freya Christie served up an absolute classic in the first of the matches. Emily sneaking through to tomorrow's final. Wins also for Jack Findle Hawkins and Olivia Nichols in the battle for positions and prize money. And just a few moments ago, Josh Paris produced a fantastic performance in the first of the men's uh, semi-finals to see off Dan Cox. And of course, he'll be back to play in the final tomorrow. So as I say, four down, two still to come. And next up is the second of the women's semi-finals. If it's half as good, as the first, then we're in for a little bit of a treat. As always, they're waiting just over my shoulder behind that black curtain, so let's bring them on. First of all, from Gloucestershire, it is 27-year-old Alicia Barnett, who won all five of her matches in Box A. She's the British number 19, so she's the highest ranked player in this event. She beat uh, Fred Christie and arguably the match of the week a few days ago. Very aggressive from the back of the court, She's got a good serve. She's going to become an aunt next week, and she's been baking cakes since the age of 15. She supports Cheltenham Town Football Club, and she also loves to read feminist books in particular. Well, she's got to read her opponent's game today, and that opponent is Beth Gray, 25 years of age from Merseyside. Currently ranked at 641. She trains at the JTC. Her boyfriend, Ed Taylor, is her coach this week, but don't worry, they've been together for five years. They know how to deal with stressful situations and uh, perhaps they'll have a couple of those to contend with during the course of the next hour or two. Uh, she likes to sing and she likes to dance as well. She cooks Asian food too. And in fact, we can hear a little more about her from the player herself. I'm 25 years old, my name is Beth Gray, and I'm roughly ranked around top 20 um, in the UK. I played Wimbledon in 2019, um, and I played against Venus Williams in the mixed doubles. That was pretty, pretty great, um, an experience. Andy Murray. He was on his way up as I was sort of growing up, so seeing him become such a great player that he is, yeah, I'd love to play doubles with him. <laughs> I did when I was younger, but I just tried to let them all go because it was a bit too stressful to keep up with everything. Um, I used to sort of not walk on the lines on court. Jimmy Connors. <laughs> Whether I win or lose, I always like to have a little bit of chocolate. <laughs> the feeling of winning is great. Um, close matches, travelling, um, sort of the potential of where we can get to playing Wimbledon, like that's sort of, always been a dream. Well, I hope Ed's got the chocolate standing by, whether she wins or loses. And the fact that she likes Jimmy Connors suggests Gigi Salmon, who has uh, rejoined me here on our uh, little eerie beside the court, that she's quite a feisty player herself. Yeah, she is, and we've seen that in some of the performances from Beth. I think she's also quite feisty, Marcus, because she's one of seven. Three older sisters, three younger brothers. If that is not going to harden you, <laughs> then nothing in life will. But yeah, we can see that from her performances on court. She had the three wins to start off the week. Then there was the defeat to Emily Appleton. She won just the four games, but she came through a really tough match late last night against Kylie Bilchev, which really highlighted her fighting properties. Yeah, that was very, very exciting. I just wonder, will that get her in exactly the right frame of mind for this evening? Or is there a danger, perhaps, that too much has now gone out of the tank? Well, interestingly, I've spoken to a couple of players, most recently Emily Animalton, Appleton, sorry, about her match with Freya Christie, and she said she thinks it was just what she needed because she'd been going along so well. But then you were speaking to Joshua Paris about playing this many matches 
in consecutive days. And that's something else that we also have to take into consideration because it's quite unusual for these players. And you think about Alicia Barnett. This is her first tournament of 2021. And suddenly she's on match number six of the week. Yeah, and uh, she's made a, a fantastic fist of things going through unbeaten in the group. But then, of course, Dan Cox went through unbeaten in his group. And we've just seen him losing his semi-final so I, I guess this is another very tough one to call are you telling us not to read into results marcus I don't know what to read into <laughs> you know me Gigi. she's just dropped the one set alicia barnett and look it is going to be tougher because when it comes to the head-to-head -head, that is beth grays i think it's 4-1 she has the head-to-head -head. does that get into the mind of players yes it does with some others don't actually care it's a new match it's it's a new day it's a new surface but i think this is going to be interesting because alicia barnett has been in really good form you've got the British number 19 in Barnet against the British number 20 in Beth Gray. Well, one other point, we, we had Sultan's uh, rules a little earlier, of course, the players are calling their own lines. They all got them extremely well, but we did think that as the stakes get a bit higher, there might be a, a little bit of an edge in that regard. We, we haven't really seen anything like that so far, have we? Yeah, but they've spoken about the fact that they're all really good friends. No one's going to come out here and make the wrong call or get upset about it. And we do have the, the umpire. And a couple of occasions they've come out and said, no, that definitely was wider, that definitely was long, just to diffuse anything that might bubble up. But it, it's been good. They keep saying, you were trying to speak to one of the players earlier, say, do you not get on? And oh. she said, no, we really do. We actually like each other. I mean, friends can fall out. We need to create a little bit of an edge at times, don't we? We can do that. Yeah. Shall we do that? Yeah. Okay. No, not me. Well, you can do that. <laughs> I, I think we, we want to see them behave in the best possible way. Gigi, thank you very much indeed. Uh, this should be special. Uh, let's get up to the commentary box and this time around Abigail Johnson is alongside Jenny Drummond. Here we go then. No more round robin, just Alicia Barnett up against Beth Gray to see who makes it through to face Emily Appleton in week one of the UK Pro League, the final. Barnett, the top ranked player in the women's draw, but Gray, actually the player leading Alicia their head to head. To right it stands at 3 1 in her favour. And chose to receive. Interesting point in that head to head, though, is that the one meeting that Barnett won was right here in Loughborough. So Abigail up. Johnson here alongside me, Jenny Drummond. Can we expect a close contest here, Jenny? Well, it's funny you ask that, Abigail, because every time these ladies have met, it has gone to three sets. So certainly we should be strapped in, ready to go the distance. And uh, it's been a day of that, really, to be honest. Some really, really close contests and a day of fantastic tennis so far. That last match as well between Josh Paris and Dan Cox. That was it. that didn't quite go the distance, but it was such a tight affair too. Yeah, it just goes to show the quality that's been on display here at the UK Pro League. And one of the closest contests was actually the first women's semi-final earlier. Emily Appleton coming from behind to seal the victory over Freya Christie. That was four six six four. 10-6 in the match tiebreak. We've seen a lot of those match tiebreaks this week. I'm not sure. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship <laughs> with the players on match tiebreaks. If you win them, you love them. If not, you'd rather scrap them. But one thing's for sure, they've had to play a lot of them here at the UK Pro League. And as you say, if history is anything to go by, we could be heading down the Best wire. Set. Beth Gray to set. Yeah, it'll be quite the matchup of styles. Barnett, the big hitter, she's been looking to move her way up the court this week. But Gray, so good on the back foot. She's got such a fluid strike. She moves so well. Yeah, exactly right. Although this is the first time that Barnett has faced a lefty this week. So a little bit of a different matchup for her. Gonna expect some swinging serves, that's for sure. And to be fair, Barnett has played her way into this week. Was a bit rusty at the start of the week and 
has struggled a couple of times to, to close out some matches, to close out some sets, but certainly yesterday against Olivia Nichols, she played some really great tennis, really solid of both wings, particularly the backhand. We'll see a lot of down the line backhands from Barnett. That's her favorite signature shot. First service. She was so secure on serve throughout that match. Any kind of half chances that Nichols got, she snuffed out. She's got to disrupt Barnett's rhythm out here, doesn't she? Yeah, but interesting there, right from the get-go, Gray's peppering the Barnett forehand. She's not going down the line to that Barnett backhand, which caused so much damage against Olivia Nichols yesterday. So clearly, I reckon she was watching that match in her hotel room. But equally, they know each other very well indeed in terms of their games, having met numerous times before. Game gray. Looking to rush behind the return, Best Barnett. Game. It is something that we've seen. She mentioned right at the beginning of the week about the heaviness of the play here at the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre and wanting to finish those points more quickly. That's something that gray is going to make difficult, so... We'll see if she switches up her tactics at all coming into this one. Yeah, I think Barnett's quite comfortable at the net. She likes to move forward. She, As you said, she likes short points. She doesn't want to be getting into really long baseline rallies at the back. She's an aggressive player herself, but does like to end them, move on to the next. And we've seen her all week charging forward. Alicia doesn't Barnett necessarily to bring in the serve volley, but loves to, in the middle of the rally, come forward. Good doubles player too. Won numerous titles on the ITF circuit. Funny thing with these two in doubles Love 15. is that six titles for Barnett. Four of them have come with Olivia Nichols. Beth yes, Gray, <laughs> the other two. 14 doubles titles and nine. Way to be able to use her weapon on the court. Stretched her out 30. under some pressure there. Sometimes this can happen, can't it? Great, really squeezing through that win over Kylie Bilchev. And you can almost feel like you're on your second life when you've come through a match like that. Playing very freely. And timing the ball exquisitely well. Where's Three times she went back behind there when at one point there didn't even seem to be a space. I know exactly. This was a great play from Beth Gray. I was slightly surprised that she did go back behind. But she knows how quick Olivia Nichols... Not Olivia Nichols, that is her doubles partner <laughs> I played earlier. She knows how quick Barnett is. Solid volley showing off her double skills. But she's still going after it, Barnett. She That's knows easy, what she it. wants to do out here. And it was that same kind of commitment from Gray that saw her through her win yesterday. Yeah, so she's, she's just going to hang on in there. She knows that Gray is playing some great tennis right now. But she's just got to hold on and hope that Gray offers up a couple of opportunities, throws in some unforced errors. And here's, here's an opportunity right here, right now.
Well, if she'd have won that on the stretch, it would have been very yes. impressive because Gray is looking rather imperious in these early stages when she's moved up the court. So softly around that ball. Got a little bit stuck Gray. there. I did burn it. Didn't quite get enough little steps in to move out the way of the ball. Had to stretch. And in turn, netting that backhand. And look at her reaction. She's just not happy with herself in the opening stages of this match right now. Gray. She's routinely getting herself up to that forecourt as Beth Gray. And that has been Barnett's bossing area. But it's Gray dominating right now. The previous meetings between Beth Gray and Alicia Barnett have gone down the wire, and this one still could, but it is Gray running with the opening set at present. Yeah, well, there's never been a six love set between them. So if things were to carry on the way they are right now, that would be a first. Barnett has a task on her hands to disrupt the rhythm that her opponents built out here. Let fair service. Love fifteen. At this point, Barnett just has to try and find a bit of form. It's not really that she's played badly, it's it's that Gray's level has just been really really solid really good she's been aggressive she's barely made any unforced errors barnett just needs to try and hold here get a bit of momentum and make sure that if the set doesn't go her way she's not in a negative headspace heading into the second And you can understand why at that point she feels the need to go for more on the backhand because not only is great timing impeccably, but she's got wheels around the court. There's Thanks. just aren't many openings right now. Yeah, she's a quick mover and Barnett's just trying to finish the points a little bit quickly here. That's definitely not going to help her mood right now. Seeing the Love ball 14. like a football right now, <laughs> Beth Great. Racing towards the finish line of this set. Triple break point. Oh, it's the best feeling when you're playing this well. Mm -hmm. 
there it is. Would you Six believe it? Six games on the trot for Beth Gray. Absolutely sailing with the opening stages of this match. It's Beth Gray out in front. I can't hear anything. Uh, hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, got it. You can hear <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to be chatting to you in a minute, okay? Okay. Cool. Beth Gray has raced through an opening set six. Love, we're going to chat to her now. Beth, take us through that one. Uh, yeah, I think I um, got off to a really sharp start. Um, sort of taking my opportunities when I got them. Um, yeah, hanging in points well when I had to. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Beth, you seem to be seeing the ball absolutely massively. Um, Abigail was saying you're seeing it like a football. How does it feel when you're hitting the ball that well? Yeah, it's great. Like I, um, I've sort of struggled with my execution a bit this week, um, early on in the week. So it's nice to sort of get rewards for that now. I've just sort of kept going with the same sort of plan on those shots, and yeah, today they're sort of I'm executing them well. You've played Lissy a few times before. How much of those meetings do you remember? And did you have a solid game plan based on them coming into this one? Um, yeah, we've played quite a lot. Um, I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been quite different each time, given different conditions. Um, but yeah, we know each other's games pretty well. So I think we've both sort of got a game plan nailed down against each other. So it's kind of whoever executes that on the day. <laughs> What have you got to do in this second set? Because obviously the momentum is, is with you at the moment, but we know so often in tennis it can shift so easily. What are the tactics going into the second set? Uh, I think I'm just going to keep everything the same, to be honest, and just keep trying to execute when I get those opportunities um, and see what she comes up with. If she comes up with something, I'll just try and tackle that head on. Well, why change what's working? Good <laughs> going, Beth. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. Thanks a lot. Seeming pretty chilled, Beth Gray. I mean, it's not often that they have to do those interviews mid-match. She handled it remarkably well. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. She's a really nice girl, quite relaxed, really friendly indeed. Always says hello to everyone. And why wouldn't you be relaxed when you're playing such good tennis? It really was a solid opening set from Beth Gray. Barely made any unforced errors. Served to... Very solid indeed, 81% first serves. Just trying to keep herself warm there right now. It's, it's quite cool here inside the Damasco Tennis Center. We can understand Barnett just taking a little bit of time to collect her thoughts. And I wonder what she will be thinking. I mentioned partway through that first set, Gray obviously likes the rhythm of playing Barnett. So how far does Barnett send herself out of her own comfort zone in order to combat that? Well, she's got to change it up in some way, shape or form. On the one hand, she's got to hope that the level of, of grade dips a little bit. She's got to take her opportunities. At this point, she needs to focus on her own service games. Make sure that she gets as many big first serves in as she can. Try Sorry. and get some cheap points and then look to seek some opportunities on the grey serve. But it's going to be great who's serving first in this set. So... At this point, Barnett must make Second as many set. returns as she can. Great to set. Let's first service. Picks up where she left off. 15 love. 
And that's a really good tennis from great showcasing her movement at the back of the court. And Barnett just getting a little bit stuck in no man's land there. Hadn't quite committed totally to coming into the net. Love. Well, there are some positives for Barnett. The fact that all their previous meetings have gone the distance and the fact that that first set raced by so quickly that she can come out here and try and reset and treat it as if the match is just starting over. Yeah, and also the fact that with it being a championship tiebreak as the third set, it doesn't seem such a mountain to climb. Yeah, that's a big one. The most recent meeting actually came at the UK Pro Series, last summer Pro Series, because that was six weeks of back-to-back -back competition. We've got nine weeks of the UK Pro League spread out across this season. Oh, that's positive. Oh, how well worked was that rally? Ridiculous. Oh my goodness. What a rally indeed. Barnett having to work so hard to win a point right now, but in tennis so often we see in a match a turning point. The momentum has well and truly been with Great so far, but could that change things up? Because that was a huge point to win for Barnett. Well, sometimes there is a bit of a drop, isn't there, after a high-intensity point. Gray may be getting her breath back or getting her focus back, but it does provide an opening for Alicia Barnett. Momentum game shift Barnett. indeed. There it goes. First game, second set. Well, there was so much positive that Barnett did in that long rally that she won. It was the first time that we'd really seen her steer the forehand down the line in the way that she did painting the line like she has done earlier in the week. The lob from Gray as well was traveling far back. It was quite an uncomfortable position to take a smash in and she made it. You said momentum shifter and there it is. Exactly right. That was a pivotal point in the middle of that game. It was 30-15 on the grey serve and incredible rally. Barnett winning it and my goodness, she got the break right there, got on the board. You can see there, Barnett only winning 18% of her first serves in those points played. That is not good enough at all. That just shows that grey was all over the returns and just dictating the points. Barnett couldn't really get a look in, but certainly got a look in in that game. And that will give her some confidence in her service game now. Fifteen long. I'm sort of feeling more positive. You saw at the beginning of that rally, Barnett crouching down, using her legs to take the forehand on and just keeping her positioning on top of the baseline, whereas previously, Gray has been pushing her back with the depth. Stayed up on top. 
15 all. You can see why <laughs> she's been pushing her back. My word. That was a rocket. Well, it's something that's said a lot, but it is true that a break is not a break until it's been consolidated. And this is a big game for Barnett to carry on the momentum that she just picked up in the last few points. Gray trying to seize it back. T-line is proving tricky. I saw it wide. Just to so be consistent with the one I saw in there. Barnett didn't. She's telling them that she saw it on the line. Oh, she just decelerated a little 15, bit 14. on that backhand had the positioning that she wanted. Well then, break back chances for Beth Gray. Carefully placed. 30, 40. To try and overplay that, just guided it into the court. This was a really solid first serve down the tee from Barnett. Kept her cool here. It's not always the easiest shot having to hit up, especially when the ball stays low on these courts with a slice. That's more game like gray. tactic gray using the opening set. One game all. Open the court up on the barn at forehand. We mentioned her game face. We mentioned her composure. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now from Gray. Barnett broke to open a set. That could have caused frustration. She'd been rolling through the opening set and that, that change of ends, that start of a new set can definitely be a momentum changer, a, changer, a mindset changer, but nothing changed for Gray. She kept back with those key tactics. Let's see if she can capitalize here. She take that in the air. 15 long. I think she'll regret that decision that she just made there. Slight panic. She definitely should have let it bounce. And just shows that things just aren't firing for Barnet right now. Doesn't feel super comfortable out there. I do wonder as well if there's a little bit of mental or physical fatigue from Barnett based on that shot choice in the previous point and the fact that this was her first tournament of the year. She hadn't competed in the previous couple of months and this is a lot of tennis to play in a short space of time, six matches, six days.
Beth Gray, meanwhile, is used to playing a lot of tennis. She played upwards of 20, 30 matches in July last year. Yeah, it's, it's inevitable. It's a bit of a twofold situation in that the players are getting so many matches under their belt, but given the situation with the pandemic, they're bound to feel a little bit fatigued and they've both been battling it out all week too. They haven't been really straightforward matches because the league is super competitive. Mm. How she looped that forehand to get the depth. 14-15. Oh, great, just hitting corner to corner. Such accuracy. Dictating play really is hitting off the front foot and pushing Barnett so far behind the baseline. She threw the kitchen sink in that rally, did Barnett, and didn't get anything back except sheer quality from Beth Gray. Game, Gray. She does it again. She sneaks her nose out in front. Gray leads two games to one. Started this set a breakdown, but now she's out in front heading into the change events. Emily Appleton came from a set down to defeat Craya Christie, <laughs> Christie earlier and make it into the UK Pro League final. And Alicia Barnett, the top ranked female player in the draw, is going to have to do the same thing if she wants to join her. Was up a break in this second set, broke to open, but Beth Gray has been relentless with her depth of shot. Well, at the sit down at the end of the set, Beth Love told 15. us when we got the chance to speak to her that she's just going to try and do the same sort of thing. And that's exactly what she's doing. It's still working perfectly. Seems to be so together with her game plan. Knows exactly what she wants to do with the ball, where she wants to hit it, and what exactly is going to hurt Barnett. The last couple of points should Love fire warnings of danger down to Barnett's end of the court because great, just able to tee off on that forehand. And she's, she's in a return game here. In the previous point, she was able to hit every forehand from the middle of the baseline. She wasn't ha having to move. And there she got the serve right in her strike zone. Some days you're just on it, aren't you? Love 40. Exactly right. That forehand down the line from Gray. Just keeping 
Barnett guessing. I know she's been peppering the forehand, but Barnett certainly expected the cross court in that one. What a chance here. Triple break point for three games on the trot. Boy, does Barnett need some big first serves. Same again with the forehand at the line, but Barnett able to cover it on this occasion. Yeah, that was great defense from Barnett there. It wasn't easy because that return of serve came at her with some pace. But did just enough. Good point. There's the splits again. Not the first time I've seen that from Sorry, Beth Gray, uber flexible. Just about 20 minutes ago, it was Barnett's turn for the They're all showing off. <laughs> they're, they're just <laughs> all got gymnastic backgrounds. Showing us what we can't do. <laughs> but from Barnett there, it was very interesting to see. It seems like she was applying extra topspin to her forehand side just to give it a little bit more margin. She also got more depth in that rally. And credit to Barnett, she's got such a solid overhead. Oh, she painted some lines Jeez. in that rally. Crucially. That's what it's taking against Gray right now to actually fight through a point. That's exactly right. It is such an effort for Barnett right now. Two in points against Gray, but crucially, she has won three in a row. She's pegged back from Love 40 to Juice. Advantage, Barnett. Little lapse. One of few. And it might come at a quite key moment for Barnett. She smartly works her way back into this game. And she can take that little gift as a reward. As the backhand, game Gray hasn't it. let us see much of it today, but they were well placed. That's Two a really all. crucial hold for Barnett in this set because if she had been broken there again, it would have been a tough ass to come back from. But she's just sending a little message to Gray to say, I'm hanging on in here. Such commitment. And going back to what you were saying earlier, the match tiebreak scenario of this really changes it up for Bonnet. If she is feeling a bit tired, if her focus is a little bit lacking, she knows that she just has to work away at this set. And then it's a shootout to see who goes through. Let's first service. Fifteen low. Well, another close one. Second ace for a great. Nice change up with the wide serve. Big hitting. 15 all. Barnett able to keep herself on top of that baseline more regularly within the past couple of games or so. Yeah, she's tried to move her court position forwards. Try and hit the ball a little bit earlier, take some time away from Gray because at the moment it's been Gray swinging. Wow, it just shows you what putting a ball back in the court 15, can do because 30. Barnett was at full stretch on that return. 
Just had to touch it. It was all she could do. It turned out to be enough. Just got quite overexcited with that forehand drive volley. That could be costly. Beth Gray says, not just yet. 30 all. She wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. That one considerably tougher to hit, actually. But she watched it right onto the strings. defensive skills from Beth Gray. She might not have won the point, but they were unreal. Barnett having to work so hard here, but the commitment is absolutely admirable. My goodness me, Beth Gray certainly has some wheels on her. Does not mind being on the stretch on that forehand side either. Absolutely hustling away from the back of the court. But credit to Barnett, she did enough. And now is another opportunity here. Trading breaks at the moment. Yes. That's big to see her slam the door in that manner. Committing. It's that timing once again, that ball as it's coming down, accelerating. If she made that look easy. serious right now with this Our ball striking my goodness me there certainly is some pace on these balls going back and forth between these two ladies and there was an extra injection of pace on that backhand from Barnett Green not able to control it another chance Absolutely Barnett. cracked down on her forehands throughout that rally, did Alicia Barnett. Barnett leads three games to two. Hurling them across the court. She has not given up on this set or this match. She's out in front, 3-2.
Well, neither of the players has been allowed to sustain momentum out here in this second set, but it was Barnett who stepped right up to take the advantage before that change of ends, leading 3-2 with the break. And we saw in the first set, Gray serving a high percentage of first serves. She was really potent with it. There were a couple more second serves there for Barnett to lock into. We saw her inching forward with her return position, and we mentioned it before, more and more often able to stay on top of that baseline, which is something that Gray's depth of shot has prevented her from doing in the earlier stages of this match. Yeah, well, it's in interesting because tactically in the first set, Barnett was trying to move forward more in terms of coming to the net. But in that last game, there was a number of massive baseline exchanges and Barnett was the one who was winning most of them. So maybe he needs to stay at the back of the court a little bit more and pick her net opportunities a little bit better. Love 15. Well, these are huge moments, really. Consolidations of breaks have been hard to come by. Exactly. This is a big game for Barnett. Because you can see her body language there. She's a bit down on herself, a bit frustrated. And no wonder. Her opponent's been playing some great tennis right now. And frustrations coming from the fact that she hasn't been able to get into this match but certainly the second set she's turned things around so far Love 30. Giving it a long look, and it did fly, didn't it? That final ground stroke from Gray. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. Players calling their own lines. We have no line judges due to the pandemic, and when you're trying to concentrate on your court position, how you're hitting the ball, when it's a close call, it's, it's not easy. That's a smart 15, serve 30. into the body. Not seen so much of that today in this match anyway. Well, that really jammed Gray up. Took a little bit of pace off the ball too. Oh, Barnett made sure she got that first delivery in. As you say, winning more of those longer baseline exchanges, Barnett. Gray was striking the ball so well so early on, it's difficult to sustain that kind of form for the entirety of a match. Well, that's normally far more of her bread and butter. For Barnett loves the backhand win, just didn't quite get enough spin on it. The ball flew a little bit too long. And the return came, it came in deep at her feet, making that one uncomfortable. And here's another uncomfortable situation, break point down. Oh, 
painted the corner of the box there, did she? Apparently not. Well, I never was going to train as a line stretch. <laughs> I'll put that out there. Some response, though. Potentially taking Gray yes. by surprise, racing up to that forecourt behind the second serve. It was really nice the way she took the ball out the air here. Punishing that forehand volley. Does like to move forward, and that was the perfect time to... Advantage, Barnett. Well, we feel if she can sneak across the line here, she'd be halfway home because these consolidations have been tough. And after a lengthy game, you feel you can just swing a bit in the game that follows. There will be opportunities. Yes. Try volley from the baseline from Gray. Long. She's still got the timing. This game just has such a big sense of importance in this second set. Both players fighting so hard. Advantage, Barnett. Grey's levels definitely dropped a couple of notches. Barnett's winning far more points than she did in the opening set. She won just 10 points in that first set. Well, game, Barnett. She could use it. The net call just disrupting Gray's rhythm slightly, but also she saw the opportunity to attack. Didn't quite have the lift. Huge game, huge hold for Alicia Barnett. Yeah, a couple of errors just coming in from Gray there. And credit to Barnett, she has fought her way into this match, has herself in a really good position here. Love 15. And now, Gray, in this position on the scoreboard, will feel that that serve is under a little bit more pressure. She does have the tendency to ebb and flow in terms of her form throughout a match, and this has been the case here. But when she was playing so well Love in the opening 30. set, it's difficult not to come down a notch or two. That is the thing that separates the good Love players body. from the best players. It's not how well you can peak, but when you peak. 
and Grey as brilliantly as she played in that opening set is in a very sticky situation here. Suddenly, triple break point for the double break advantage. Oh, Game come on. That is ridiculous. Just a couple Barnett of minutes ago, she was fighting for her life, and now she is sailing with this set. Heading to the change of ends, Alicia Barnett out in front. You might look at this scoreboard and see that Alicia Barnett is about to serve the second set of 5-2 and think that she's been sailing, but in reality, she was in some tight spots just a few moments ago. And Gray has to be wondering how this set so quickly got away from her after she steamrolled through the opener. And just a few unforced errors here in this second set from Gray, particularly off that forehand wing into the net. And Credit to Barnett, her level's gone up. She's fought her way into the rallies. She's hitting some big ground strokes, that's for sure. She's taking risks, and they're coming off right now. And she's done really well to turn this second set around and be in charge here, serving for the second set. A few more balls on her backhand side, and also just picking her moments a little bit more to move up the court. You mentioned before she was seeming to rush a little bit to get into that forecourt. And now she's reading the game so much better. It's as though that Gray raced through that first set so quickly that she didn't give Barnett time to figure herself out, get a rhythm. 15, love. that this shouldn't look so surprising if you know that <laughs> all of their previous meetings have gone down the wire. Thirty, love. <laughs> well, <laughs> she'll take it at this 13, point. 15. Yeah, but it just shows again, Gray not getting enough height over the net with her grind strokes. Just isn't playing with much margin for error at the moment. Forty fifty. Well, you have to applaud Alicia Barnett because she really looked up against it. Even in the earlier stages of the second set, she 
looked tired. She looked a little bit lost at times, but she has grafted her way back into this. Well, better now than earlier in the set when she was in that sticky game that she absolutely had to come through. The hold for 4 2 proving significant. Just. Yes. Doesn't want a couple though. Oh. That's got to be a bit of pill to swallow right there. Works so hard to get herself in front in the service game. Brings up a couple of set points and two doubles. But we see this, don't we? It's sometimes easier to play your way back into a match and then it can be more difficult <laughs> when you suddenly have something to lose. Yeah, we've seen that with Barnett. She hasn't found it the easiest to close sets. Here she comes. Her advantage, Gray. Gray is a worker. She just never knows when she's done. And the attitude is just brilliant. Commits to every single point, whatever the scoreboard. And that might see her back into this set. But not with serving like that from Barnett. Sharp out wide. Yeah, that was a heavy delivery indeed from Barnett, given the fact that she's just rolled in a couple of double faults. She'll take that first serve. Advantage Barnett. Just kept pressing. She has done throughout this set. Once again, Barnett a point away from leveling up. Game and second set, Barnett. It had to happen. It absolutely had to happen. Alicia Barnett has leveled up this match. Ladies and gentlemen, we are headed to a 10-point point match tiebreak. Hey, Lissy, can you hear this? Yeah, hi, Abigail. Okay, cool. We'll be chatting to you when we're back on after the commercial. Okay.
Well, we are headed to a match tiebreak. Alessia Barnett has fought back. We're going to chat to her now. Lissy, take us through that set, please. Um, well, as you can see, the first set was pretty dire. <laughs> um, but I had to have a short memory. Went, reset myself, and just dug in and played how I should play. Um, yeah, I mean, rapey start, but it is what it is. You don't seem too too happy with the way things are going right now. You seem a little bit hard on yourself, granted that that, that first set didn't quite go your way, but what a fight back in the second to turn it around. Yeah, I mean, it's a match tie right now, so I need to just focus in the present and just take one point at a time now and forget about what's happened in the past. Just coming into this match, Lissy, with it being a semi-final, suddenly out of the round-robin stage, did that change your mindset at all coming into it, with it being a one-match shootout? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's tennis at the end of the day. Every match is the same, to be honest. Um, now I'm just trying to focus on improving in general, so it doesn't matter. It's just a tennis match. Well, we'll let you get back to business. Thanks, Lissy. Thank you. I mean, fair play to her actually having that conversation before a match tiebreak to decide who goes through to the week one final of the UK Pro League to take on Emily Appleton. I don't think I'd have done that. <laughs> just having leveled up, not feeling entirely happy with my level. Well, you know, it just gives us such a great insight into how they're feeling and, and what they're thinking. And clearly she's still seething after losing that first set in that fashion. But as she said, she's got to put it out of her mind. She's got to focus. She's got to play in the present. And the present is the fact that this is a championship tie-rate to see who does go through to the final. Well, it's been tense throughout. And the pressure moments don't get bigger than these. Massive start, mini break, huge rally, able to steer with the forehand once again. I'm just so impressed with how Barnett has managed to stick in this match. And not just that, the level has gone up. She hits such a big ball. She stays so close to the baseline. She takes risks. Even when she's feeling quite hard on herself, she still backs her own game. the line are you kidding goodness me the aggression levels have definitely gone up a few notches here on court one clipping the outside of the line look how low she stayed that took some amount of strength right on top of the baseline really is stepping in right now into her shots barnet Stop it. I mean, 
This this is a bit of a throwback to her earlier matches of the tournament, Barnett, particularly that opening one against Danielle Daly, first time that she had played for a while and she just wasn't finding her groove. She didn't quite have a timing, but still committed, still went after her shots and eventually came through. They are much needed right now and that's a good serve to have in your pocket, the lefty swing serve for times like these. I yeah, agree, really needed to stop the momentum there. A few points in a row going against her. I had to get into this championship tie break. She works through. I wasn't quite sure what to think of Gray serving down the tee into the barn at backhand. Not getting her out on the stretch. It seemed questionable, but she made it work. Well, credit to Gray in that point. She was chasing every single ball down. She was just showing how good her court coverage is once again, making Barnett play another ball, managed to get herself back in the rally, and Barnett just forcing that forehand a little bit too much. Couple of street points for Gray here has got her right back in this championship tie break. Level at the first change events. Can we just take a moment in the middle of this highly tense situation to acknowledge what a nice thing it is within this UK Pro League that the players can have close friends and family members nearby. We've got Beth Gray with her boyfriend sat courtside watching her play. Alicia Bonnet had her dad, Nigel, here earlier in the week. Both of them close to their families. Beth has, I think, three brothers, three sisters, so yeah. she's from a, a big family background. Alicia has older brother, older sister, younger sister, nephew as well that lives nearby. And so much time on the main tour is spent away from their families and away from the people that are close to them. And to be able to have high quality competition and be this close to home is something that's quite unusual, really. Yeah, it's super special. And Olivia Nichols was speaking about it earlier, having her mum on the court. She doesn't norm her mum doesn't normally get to see her play. So it's quite special. I mean, if I was Olivia Nichols' mum, I'd be quite nervous because that was a super tight match. But it's great to have these players and their families supporting them. But I don't know how I'd feel about my boyfriend on the court. <laughs> 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 Might set off an argument or two. Nicely guided with the forehand. That's great concentration from Barnett because they led this championship tie break three love. A couple of unforced errors. Gray was right back in it. Really solid point there from Barnett. It's got her back out in front. She had that ball where she wanted it. You heard the noise levels there increase from Barnett. So did the pace. What a backhand down the line. Absolutely teeing off. And it getting the job done. Great. Couldn't quite handle the pace there. She's definitely got her positioning back. She likes to strike out in front, Barnett, kind of leaning forwards. Was able to do that throughout that rally. And 
left on that return. Three all we were at the change of ends. It's amazing how a few points can make all the difference on the scoreboard when it comes down to something like a tie break. If it was first to seven points, this would be three match points Barnet, but a tiny bit more breathing room in the ten point match tie break. What a return of serve. Got Barnett so far out of the court. Just had to go back in behind her. But Green, not scared of taking a risk or two herself. Considering Barnett was serving, that was a pretty big point scoreboard-wise for Gray to win, just closing the gap slightly. We need to start counting the shots in these <laughs> rallies. Extending beyond belief. And it's incredible to see in multiple matches how this has happened in the pressure moments. We saw it in Barnett's match with Christie the other day. And players fighting to win matches. There are so many points in key moments being won rather than lost. What an absolute corker of a rally that was. Shame one of them had to lose it. Some massive, massive hitting going on right now. Great quality tennis from these two ladies. Oh, she just pushed the volley. Rhythmic backhands to set up. And just bunted the final shot long. That one's going to sting a little bit. She was on top of the net. It wasn't the most straightforward volley, but just looked a little bit tentative. Racket face open just a tiny bit too much and sent it long. Well, you could see Gray running to cover, and, and when you've got a player like Beth Gray who's so fast around the court, you feel like you have less time. You've already spent that time running up to the forecourt, and then she's on her way over to get that ball back. That feeling to do more with it is, is totally understandable, but a, a bad moment for it there. Or good, if you're Beth Gray. <laughs> She knows how to apply the pressure. She was whipping up the back of those forehands, but when it went onto the backhand wing, it seemed a little bit more pressurized. Well, isn't it interesting? Twice in this tie break, Gray has been down by three points, has pegged it back level, and cannot take the lead. So you're saying that Barnett's going to get to 9 6 <laughs> here, <laughs> and then we're going to get to 9 all? <laughs> Potentially. If the pattern keeps repeating itself, yes. Strap yourselves in, guys.
Just stared wide. The forehands from Gray were just relentless. Well, Barnett just knows how quick Gray is at the back of the court and knows how good the shot has to be if it's to go past her as a winner. You can see she was trying to, bit. sorry, Jenny, she was trying to force her way up the court and yet was being held back. I, I just wonder if she went for too much because there really wasn't that much of an opening for her to get forward the way she wanted to. That is where you want a cheap point. Just getting a little bit stuck there. Feet not moving too well and hint of nerves. It's one of the first signs of nerves, feet stopping. No wonder though, it's a really big moment for both of these women. Well, it's all come down to this. With an unreturned serve, it is Beth Gray with the first match point, and she will hope it's the only one. So the chair umpire is saying that he saw that server's catching the service box, so Barnett will get a first serve back, which she will much appreciate at this position on the scoreboard. How well did she do to survive that net cord? My goodness, that is some reaction from Barnett. So instinctive, didn't try to be too clever with it or anything, just whipped at it to get it back across the net to keep herself alive. And alive she is, although we head into this change of ends, tied precariously at 9 all. Barnett did so well there. <laughs> Love her reaction. Well, it, it would just have been <laughs> Thank painful you for, <laughs> Thank for you its lucky stars. With that, dare you call this? <laughs> really couldn't get much tighter right now. And what a championship tiebreak it's been so far. Some top notch tennis, big rallies. We cut the tension with a knife right now.
baseline rally extended. She's been taking the upper hand in them, Bonnet. But that backhand's just a touch too flat. Another fantastic rally. Such depth from Great. She's eradicated those errors that she was hitting before, and now another opportunity for her. She gets it done. Beth Gray battles through the match tiebreak to book the final spot in tomorrow's ultimate showdown. She will take on Emily Appleton in the final of the UK Pro League week one. And I don't think she had much energy to react after that because boy, did those two take it out of each other in the end. Yeah, it really was a battle from start to finish in the sense that we knew Coming into it, these two had played a number of times. It had always gone the distance. It certainly did once again. It was Beth Gray who came out super quick with some top quality tennis. Barnett couldn't even get on the board in that opening set. But she somehow managed to turn it around. It was a breakdown in the second two, let's not forget. But did turn that around and was hitting some great balls from the back of the court. Winning those baseline exchanges. Led the championship tiebreak twice, was three love up, six three up, but credit to Gray, she dug deep. And now it's on as she is into the final. You have to feel for Alicia Bonnet. Sailed through the round robin stage when it mattered. She won all five of her matches. But as you say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And Beth Gray, while, while she struggled at moments in that group stage, absolutely rose up when it mattered in this match and she'll be up against Emily Appleton that could turn into quite the battle Appleton with some big serves big forehands and great with the footwork to be able to track those shots down a little bit more and apply a little bit extra pressure absolutely Appleton wasn't quite on form today but she'll be going back and coming back tomorrow well here is Beth Gray with a smile on her face it's time for her to chat to Marcus Buckland yeah, thank you very much indeed. We've had some fantastic matches today. That was incredible. Talk about it from your perspective. Oh, yeah, well, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was a great fight. It always is between me and Lissy. We've had a lot of battles in the past, but um, yeah, I mean, I came out all guns blazing in the first set. I was executing really well, um, but she did really well to reset and come back, come back fighting in the second set. She, I think she played some unbelievable tennis in that second set, so... I just had to reset and go again for the tie break and um, I stuck to my, my patterns really well so it paid off in the end under pressure. Yeah, it was, talk about under pressure, fantastic towards the end of the net court on the first yeah. match point so describe your relief at finally getting through. Yeah, I was, I was really nervous those last few points, um, kind of sort of backed off a little bit and wasn't totally going through the ball but um, yeah, I, I managed to reset, um, I think, because I keep a very level head. That um, puts me in good stead under pressure. You're through to the final. You've played Emily before, of course. What, what are your thoughts in terms of that potential matchup? Uh, yeah, well, we played uh, a few days ago, and she sort of just blew me off the court, to be honest. She ser she's been serving really well this week, so I think if I can look after my serve and try and take a few chances on her serve then it's going to be a really good match well we're certainly looking forward to that and I know you like to treat yourself with a little bit of chocolate <laughs> whether you win or you lose so has your boyfriend remembered that essential ingredient yeah I think so he always has some backup chocolate <laughs> for all occasions so yeah I think I'll treat myself with a few mini eggs <laughs> yeah. well well you deserve to don't eat too many because you're going to come <laughs> back tomorrow of course for the final but many congratulations this Thank evening you. thanks very much yeah, and of course, we'll have that final uh, tomorrow. It should be an absolute humdinger. Emily Appleton herself came through a fantastic match with Freya Christie right at the start of uh, our coverage, and those two should produce something very special. Uh, Gigi is alongside me. We've been treated today. Just about every match has gone to a match tiebreak, and 
kept us guessing until the last ball's been struck. And can I just say the best boyfriends always have backup chocolate. That is a fantastic answer. And it's been fantastic tennis from start to finish, especially with the women's matches that we've been focusing on together. They've gone the distance. They've been really high quality. We talked about playing your peers and what it means. It's something special. They're good friends off the court. They've gone on off the court. But when you step onto the court, the battle lines are drawn. And for Beth Gray to turn that around, that was a very impressive performance from her. But it's going to be difficult against Emily Appleton. Yeah, and let's um, give Alicia Barnett some credit as well, because, of course, she came through the group stage undefeated. She recovered so well from the horrors of that first set. As she said during her interview going to the championship tiebreak, you need a, a, a short-term memory on occasions. But I, I guess she's going to be frustrated because she played so well to finish top of her particular group. Yeah, she certainly did. She just dropped the one set coming into this final. It's been very impressive. It's her first tournament of 2021 and she had her opportunities. She, she said she has the goldfish memory of the five seconds. And you know what? It's a good thing to have in this sport. She couldn't get over the line. She was the highest ranked player here on the women's side of the draw. But so many positives. Remember, this is week one of eight heading towards the final. So there's plenty of positives that Bonnet can take away from these seven days yeah and of course she's not finished yet because she'll come back tomorrow and battle for third place we're going to take a short break and when we come back we've got the second of the men's semi-finals which should be another humdinger 